The thing I liked about the war as well, you had free orange juice and free uh, drinking chocolate. And it came in large tins like that, silver tins. Oh, I loved that. That's the one thing I liked about the war. And I can always remember saying to my son and daughter some years back, when we are talking about uh, it's not very safe for children to be let out these days with so many murders and paedophiles. And I said to Mark and Julie, I said, well, it was marvellous in my time. We were really safe. And they pointed out to me, yeah, you were only being bombed all the time. <laughs> My name is Jean Andrews at the moment, but I was born Jean Thorley and I've lived in Swansea all my life, 85 years, and I've loved every minute of it. Uh, the city has changed a lot. Of course, the Germans did us no favours because they absolutely bombasted the town. Uh, especially on the three night split and it was never rebuilt in the same way. It was a charming town. The small shops were lovely. We had wonderful stores like Ben Evans. Uh, just they, they were just wonderful. It was the Harrods of Swansea but it all went with the bombing. Uh, I think town now it's not the town we had. But for me, there is nowhere like the town of Swansea in my eyes. The Sandfield Swansea pre-war was the most wonderful place to live. Everyone was happy. Uh, there was no need of anyone going into a hospital or home as they are today because the front doors were always open and of course everyone, the neighbours took it in turns to come in if you were ill, look after you, no child minders because everybody in the street was empty and you could go to anyone's house. Uh, next door to us uh, was my lovely cousin Cyril and his mother and father, uh, Chrissy and Cyril. Uh, that was at number 15, further down at number 8, uh, my grandmother, my two aunts and two uncles. So you had somewhere to go all the time. And it was lovely, lovely atmosphere in Swansea, a beautiful town. The architecture, everything was beautiful, absolutely. And it was just wonderful. But then one morning, Everything I felt changed. My two aunts and my uh, aunt next door, my, my mother, two mother sisters, and she was uh, her cousin, came in and everyone sat around the wireless and it was completely quiet, where I was always used to chatter as a child. And I knew there was something strange. And of course, what they were, so upset they knew what was going to come, that Britain was at war with Germany. I am speaking to you from the cabinet room at 10 Downing Street. This country is at war with Germany. And it would mean that anyone who was in the reserve would go right away. And of course that was my father. It was a very, very sad occasion when we saw my father off at High Street Station. I can still see my father and mother now. My mother was crying, my father was trying to hold back the tears for both of us. But of course he had to, had to go right away. My mother didn't want to go home. She just couldn't face everyone and so we went at that time, the Grand Theatre uh, was a cinema and we went to the Grand Theatre and the film they were showing was San Francisco, you know, about the earthquake of, uh, earthquake of San Francisco and, I mean, 
it was a really sad film in any case. But my mother cried all the way through the film and there's nothing I could do as a child as an older hand to help her. And it was a really sad moment for me and I've never forgotten it. But as with everything else in life, as time goes on, we get used to things. We got used to the war. I mean, now everyone carries a phone around. We had to carry the gas mask. Everywhere we went, we had to have the gas mask. We had had random uh, raids uh, ever before the three nights bombing. But one day, my uncle took me on my three-wheeler bike to come to Donkin Park for a change instead of Singleton or Victoria Park that we went to constantly. And there was a, a long plane that came overhead and it was firing, firing at the park. And we had to dive into the rhododendron bushes and hide, lie flat on the ground. Because I can remember getting home, my mother said to me, where have you been with your coat? You're full of dirt. But we just had to do that. I mean, it was a lone plane, but that was quite a, quite a frightening experience. But again, you got up and just treated it as a normal day as you would now. Of course, there were very serious times in the Second World War. A uh, very serious time for us living in town was the three days blitz because it absolutely obliterated, as I've said before, the town had gone, vanished in those three nights beyond recognition. And I still get shivers when I think of walking through the town after the three nights and not seeing hardly anything standing. I mean, what is the King's Way now? You could stand at the top of Castle Street and look down the King's Way. And the only thing standing was Mount Pleasant Chapel and St Andrew's Church, the other end of St Helens Road. The old Swansea Hospital was bombed beyond recognition. Uh, our chapel, Brunswick, uh, for the rest of the war, we had to go to church in the schoolroom, that had been born, bombed. All of St Helens Road was taken out. And it was just a different world. It was if, you know, I'll never forget walking through St Mary Square and smelling uh, the water that the horse pipes had put water on the, the burning uh, timbers off the church. And I, I can still imagine the sm uh, smoke and the smell of it. It was really bad. For those three nights, we stayed in the shelters uh, until six in the morning uh, from early evening. And it was relentless bombing, as I've said, on the town, on us. The school opposite, St Helens School, that was absolutely bombed with incendiary bombs. And Mr Sinclair, my next door neighbour at the time, uh, he tried to get in through the school window to put it put the fire out with the hose pipe, but because he was rather on the fat side, he got stuck in the window. And we've often thought about it since, but he was really brave to try and get into the school. But luckily, other people sort of helped him and he got there in the end. They pushed him in, actually. They didn't pull him out, they pushed him in. And of course, that night, we had a dead incendiary bomb at the side of our shelter. We felt the bump of it and we all just sat. Nobody moved, but we were lucky it was a dead one. But there was one night in particular, which I think was a very sad moment for everyone. A little boy who had scarlet fever was due to be picked up in the afternoon for Hill House. That was the fever hospital at that time. And they hadn't come for him, and the mother just had a baby, so she went to the shelter. Her parents stayed with the boy because the ambulance was due to come in the evening, but didn't turn up again, probably picking casualties up elsewhere. And they didn't think that this was as important, and there was a direct hit 
on the house. And I will never, ever, and I think it still upsets me a bit now, forget the mother's cries of anguish in the street to know that her parents and her son had died and she was safe down the shelter. She said she'd have rather been in the house and be killed because it was too much to bear. And it affected everyone. The whole of the Samfields area, from the Mumbles Road up to Oxford Street, was affected. And if you go down Fleet Street today, it's the house, they've rebuilt a house, and it's set back from the row of terraced houses. And that's where it was. And of course, a stone's throw from us. The most wonderful feeling of happiness was the declaration that the war had ended. We just couldn't believe it. Victory over Europe. They'd surrendered. And this was such a wonderful, wonderful moment, as was the victory over Japan. At that time, the celebrations, uh, there's a photo I've got, James, uh, uh, the celebrations. It was so wonderful. Absolutely wonderful to think that uh, all our worries were over, so we thought, and everyone could get back to normal. All our loved ones were coming home, sadly for some, this wouldn't be the case, but for us, my father would be coming home. Of course, what we didn't realise, that my father in the regular army uh, would go on and wouldn't come home until 1956, which was after Gloucester Valley in Korea. But of course, that's another story. Uh, Joe's Ice Cream Parlour, famous ice cream parlour in Swansea. He was um, Italian and he gave us all, everyone, free ice cream when the war ended. So that was wonderful. Uh, and it was just an absolutely wonderful time where everyone thought no one would grumble again. But as I said, sadly, that wasn't the case. Everyone settled down to everyday jobs and they just didn't seem the same as they did when they were in the war. But it was nice not to be bombed. <laughs>